So you've decided you want to go to university, but you don't know which one to go to or why. I totally get it. It is daunting. There are so many courses, there are so many universities, and there are so many choices to make, and it's such a big choice too. So which one do we choose and why? For any of you who are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton and I am here to help you to get the most out of your university and college education. I've got lots of helpful tips and tricks and I have a free study skills guide that I'm sure you will find very useful. Link down in the description. The first thing that you want to think about is what type of degree. So believe it or not, there are actually lots of different types. There's a normal undergraduate degree, there's a foundation degree, a HND, a sandwich degree, an exchange programme, postgraduate degrees. Which one is for you and why? That's the first thing you really need to establish. Now I do have a helpful video that goes through all the different types of degrees, so be sure to check that one out if you don't know what I'm talking about. Once you have decided what type of degree you're looking for, you will then want to have a look at which universities offer that type of degree. One of the most important aspects for many people is location. So I would start off by thinking about where do I live now and how often do I want to return here? Because that will impact how far away you are willing to go to university. Now, if you are planning on going home to see your friends and your family at weekends, then you probably don't want to be more than a couple of hours drive away. So what I would do is I would take a map and a pen and I would draw a circle and say, this is the area that I am looking at. If you are happy to only go home on holidays, then you might be happy to travel a bit further afield, maybe to the other side of the country, for example, maybe even abroad. If you don't want to move away at all and you want to stay living in your home area, then obviously you've got a very small geographical area that you will consider. Once you have decided roughly which geographical locations are in consideration, you then want to have a look at other variables. For example, do you want to have a part-time job whilst you are studying? Are there job opportunities in the location you are considering? Some universities, for example, might be in rural areas. If you want to go abroad, perhaps you won't have the right visa to be allowed to work. These are important things that you need to consider. Also, how important is social life for you? When I first started university, my campus was in a rural location and the social life was terrible. Now that didn't please me so much at that point and I wish I had done my research beforehand so that I knew that because that may have helped me to make a different decision. So if you are into, for example, sports, have a look at what sports clubs there are in the area. If you are into going out and nightlife, have a look at what is the nightlife scene like. I then recommend that you have a look at the university rankings. Now there are different ranking systems, for example, the Times, the Guardian, the Good University Guide. I recommend that you have a look through all of them and see where your university ranks ranks overall and in terms of the specific subject that you are thinking about studying. Getting in with the top university is not the be all and end all. It's not the most important thing in the world, but it might help you to inform your decision and help you to decide whether you think it's a worthwhile university to attend or not. It shouldn't be the, the only factor, but it should be one factor out of lots of things that comes into consideration. Now it's really, really important that you actually go to the university and look around. I know it might be a bit of a journey, I know it might take up a weekend, but it is so worth it. Going to university is three, maybe four, maybe five, maybe more years of your life. It's a really big step and a really important decision that you're about to make. So you want to make sure that you are happy with the decision. So I strongly recommend that you go along to the university, go to an open day. If you can't attend an open day for some reason, then see if you can make an appointment to attend another time. Lecturers are often very flexible and they will give you a tour around if you contact them. Or perhaps the admissions department can help you out. And if not, just going and visiting the area and having a look at some of the facilities if you're allowed inside or, or even just looking from the outside can really help to give you a good feeling about, am I going to like it here? Is it what I expected? I know that there are virtual tours and tours on YouTube and things like this these days, but they're just not the same. You're not going to get the same sights, the same feeling, the, the, the smells and just really getting a feel for an area. It's not the same unless you actually go and I strongly recommend you do. During this visit, I also strongly recommend that you get to meet the tutors. You can pick up very quickly whether you think you would get along with a person, whether you think you would be able to listen to a person, whether you think, actually, I, I, I'm not sure this is for me. You can really get a feel for whether you think it's for you or not. And you can ask questions. If you want a university that's going to offer, for example, trips, 
So I've always studied travel and tourism, so trips are an important part of the curriculum. I would ask straight away, what are the residential trips? What opportunities do you offer outside of the classroom? And you can get a really good feel for what might be in place. Sometimes things will be on the website, but a lot of the time they won't. Lecturers might be planning trips, they might be planning things for next year. It's not on the website. So it's only by going and speaking to people and really getting a feel for this stuff that you're going to be able to make that, that informed decision. Another thing that I strongly recommend you do is to investigate what are the class sizes like. When I did my undergraduate degree, class sizes were small, sometimes only 10. So we had lots of one-to-one -one attention. When I did my postgraduate degree, sometimes I was in a lecture theatre with 300 other people. So it was a very different environment, a very different learning environment. The tutors were not as accessible when there were so many students. I couldn't just put my hand up and ask a question. Well, I suppose I could, but if everyone did, that would never get anywhere. I had to make an appointment to go meet with my lecturer, whereas at my undergraduate, it was a much more intimate experience. So have a think about what are you looking for and what do you prefer? Some people feel the need for that bit more support and that bit more interaction between them and their tutors, whereas some people are fine with just sitting at the back of the lecture theatre and getting on with it and just t listening, taking notes and, and being independent really. So have a think about what suits you better because different universities will have different setups. And then we have money. Money is a big part of doing a university degree these days, unfortunately. So have a think about how much are you willing to spend. Different universities will charge slightly different fees. In the UK, it's largely fairly standardized and you'll be paying around about 9,000 pounds a year. But in other countries, it can differ a lot. So have a look at what are the fees and are you happy to pay that amount? And don't let there be any surprises. For example, there were many years that I taught on a pilot's degree. So the students got a pilot license and a degree in airline and airport management. So that's great. And a lot of students or potential students saw this course and they thought, yeah, I really want to do that. I want to be a pilot. And some of them would even go so far as to coming to university, moving all of their stuff, enrolling and then say, what? It's not the normal £9,000 a year. What? The student loan doesn't cover it? Well, no, because this was a special type of degree. And in case you're not aware, it costs a lot of money to train to be a pilot. This course was not for everybody because you had to find your own methods of funding it. So just make sure that you do read the small print and you're not going to have any surprises like that. And my last piece of advice for when you are choosing a university that is the right university for you is to make sure it is right for you. And do not just follow your friends. Your friends today might still be your best friends in a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years time, but they also might not. Life will take you in different directions. Life will have its own path for you. You need to choose the university that is right for you. And I know it can be daunting. I know it can be nerve wracking to go on your own, move to a new place, you don't know anybody. It's a huge deal, but don't just follow your friends. You want to make your own decision based on you and your needs. So if you have found this helpful, please do subscribe to my channel and good luck, good luck, good luck with your university search and your applications. I will make lots more videos like this and if there is any specific questions you have or any type of video you would like, please do leave them in the comments below.